will bring a lot of different topics that are all related to energy, structure, dissipation, and surfaces uh, from uh, different areas. And uh, we actually start with a talk given by Jin Zhao, who joins us from University of Constance, is talking about uh, Moray pattern and colloidal collective motion, I guess. I'm Xin Chao from University of Constance in Germany. And thanks uh, a lot for Ariel Tosati and uh, Andrea uh, Vanosi and the other organizers for, uh, for inviting and organizing such a great uh, conference. It really feels great to have an in-person conference again after uh, more than two years of uh, pandemic. My presentation today is uh, Moray Pattern Evolution Couples Rotational and the Translational Friction at uh, Crystalline Interfaces. Uh, in the daily life, uh, when you try to push a heavy object, you would intuitively do it in such a way that you rotate and uh, translate it at the same time. Uh, because by doing so, the force required to uh, depend the object uh, would be sig significantly smaller. Uh, such uh, rotation, translation, friction, coupling uh, can be understood by considering these uh, touching asperities at the uh, interfaces. Uh, uh, subjected to, when subjected to external force or torque, these touching interfaces, these touching asperities will undergo in systematic rearrangement, which finally leads to the uh, rotation, translation, friction, coupling. Uh, at microscopic scales, the contacting interfaces are often automatically flat surfaces. Uh, these, surfa these contacts uh, exist in many nano-manipulation experiments uh, and uh, are also very important uh, in the operation of nanomechanical devices. However, they, they follow fundamentally different rules compared with uh, uh, the friction in our daily life. Uh, and many distinct, uh, distinct friction phenomena has been observed, such as topological kinks and anti-kinks mediated sliding, uh, friction duality and friction anisotropy, uh, superlubric sliding as well as uh, uh, the abri transition from a superlubric state to high friction state. Uh, in addition to rotational motion, uh, in, in addition to translational motions, uh, Nano objects uh, can also or are often rotating on crystalline surfaces. This kind of rota rotational motion uh, uh, induces a rotational friction, uh, which resists the rotation of the clusters. Uh, such rotational friction can be uh, relevant for, uh, for example, nanomechanical motors rotating on surfaces, for uh, nano manipulations on surfaces with angular control. Uh, for the creation of twist angle heterostructures structures and for surface-based catalyst. However, such a rotational friction has attracted uh, uh, much less uh, attention compared with the translational counterpart, uh, uh, not only due to the difficulties in applying the uh, 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 precise torque at a mi uh, microscopic scale, but also due to the difficulties in measuring the a static friction, the, uh, measuring the friction torque at a such small length scales. Uh, so here we implement a colloid model uh, to study the rotational uh, motion and the dynamics of, uh, of crystalline clusters moving on top of uh, periodic surfaces. Uh, specifically, we, we create colloidal crystals of uh, several tens to uh, several thousand of uh, particles uh, of closed packet uh, monolayer crystals and putting these uh, uh, crystalline clusters on top of uh, uh, periodic structures uh, prepared by photolithography. Uh, this actually mimics uh, a finite sized uh, uh, two-dimensional two franker kondorova model and due to the strong particle-particle uh, particle interaction, this model has an elastic constant K which is uh, much greater than the potential energy of the, of the particles with the surface. Uh, the lattice spacing ratio in our experiments is a few microns. Uh, uh, such a length scale is, is large enough that we can, easy to, we, we can easily mm, observe and manip manipulate the motions of the colloidal crystals. Uh, 
On the other hand, it's also s uh, small enough that uh, a classic friction loss does not uh, apply. Uh, in addition, we can uh, vary the lattice spacing ratio uh, by changing the substrate lattice spacing constant. These two movies here shows the uh, dynamics of the of the colored crystals uh, on on periodic surfaces, uh, and the first one shows roughly uh, give a rough idea of how the clusters is rotating on the periodic surface by a constant torque, and the second one give a rough idea of how the cluster is moving under a, a simultaneous a friction, a simultaneous force and a torque. Uh, now, before going to show the results of, of, of rotational friction, I would like to present some of my previous uh, results first. In the previous works, I, uh, I, I apply a constant of force uh, to a colloidal crystal and, uh, uh, and let the crystal to slide across uh, periodic surfaces. Uh, so this movie here shows the sliding motion of the colloidal crystal uh, across the periodic surface. Uh, uh, the force is applied on the horizontal uh, direction. Uh, we see that the direction of motion of the crystal uh, is, uh, is in a diff uh, different direction. So this is called uh, directional locking. We here uh, plotted the uh, orientation theta O, which is defined by this angle here, and the direction of motion theta D as a function of uh, time. Um, we see that both, uh, the, both angles are locked to 19.1 degrees and, uh, um, for most of the time, and only very occasionally they will deviate from this angle. Um, and whenever they deviate, they always deviate together. So this means directional locking is lost once uh, the cluster rotates away from a stable angle. Uh, similar directional locking has been observed when uh, crystalline clusters are sliding across uh, periodic surfaces of different uh, lattice spacings and even different symmetries. So for this cluster here, uh, we changed the substrate, substrate lattice spacing uh, from uh, 5.8 in previous movies to 5.4 microns here. So the direction of motion uh, and the orientation has been changed to uh, 13.9 degrees instead of a uh, 19.1 degree. Here, when we change the substrate lattice spacing to 6.2 micrometers, uh, the orientation uh, becomes 33 degrees, while the direction of motion is 13.9 uh, degrees. Here, we, we change it to a square surface uh, with uh, our, our uh, lattice spacing 5 micrometers. Uh, the orientation of the cluster is minus 3.4 degree, and the direction of motion is 26 six degrees. Here again for a square surface of 5.4 micrometer, both orientation and direction is locked to 45 degrees. We see that the directional locking is a, a robust and a quite a general phenomenon uh, um, for many different lattices in contact. Uh, so uh, directional locking actually appears whenever there is a roughly partially commensurate uh, contact, uh, which is uh, shown by this equation here, uh, M1A1 plus M2A2 approximately equal to N1B1 plus N2B2. The A1, A2 are the primitive vectors of the colloid cluster, and B1, B2 are the primitive vectors of the periodic surface. Uh, M1, M2, N1, N2 are small integers. Uh, this such an equation requires uh, an angular alignment between the two lattices, which leads to uh, orientation locking. So this and then finally determines the orientation of the cluster with this equation here. Uh, with such an equation in the real space, similarly we can find a, construct a similar equation uh, in the reciprocal space. Uh, here, the capital A and the B. Uh, are uh, primitive vectors in the, in the reciprocal space. And this uh, uh, relation in reciprocal space uh, is, uh, 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 is related to uh, the wave vectors in the potential energy landscape and uh, finally determines the uh, direction of motion. Uh, 
Uh, here we, we use uh, a triangular cluster on the triangular surface as an illustration, but in fact, we have generated such uh, a theory to, to arbitrary lattices in contact in, in, in this work. A direct result of the directional locking is uh, friction anisotropy. Uh, taking this uh, case as an example, the cluster is or orientationally locked to minus 3.4 degree, uh, and the direction of motion is locked to 26.6 degrees. Uh, so here we calculated its potential energy, uh, U, as a function of the cluster center of mass position, Xc and Yc here. Uh, by, fixing, by fixing the cluster's orientation at a minus 3.4 degrees. Uh, uh, the dark region is the low energy region and the brighter region are, are the high energy regions. So we clearly identify uh, low energy corridors uh, along the 26.60 degree directions. It is this uh, low energy corridor that guided the directional locking of the, of the colored cluster. Uh, uh, we obviously, if the cluster is sliding across the low energy corridor, uh, its, its, its friction will be very small, and if it's sliding perpendicular to the corridor, the friction will be very large. Uh, so this, on the right-hand side, we, we measured the, f we measured the uh, static friction uh, of the co uh, colloidal clusters as a function of the cluster's size, both in the perpendicular direction and in the parallel direction. In the perpendicular direction, we see that the static friction is, uh, remains more or less constant. Uh, the static friction per particle remains more or less constant. Um, uh, while uh, in the parallel direction, the static friction per particle uh, 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 decrease, um, uh, decreases dramatically when the cluster size uh, increases. This indicates a, a directional superloop recity at a very large cluster uh, size. Uh, uh, such directional loop recity uh, can, uh, uh, provides a, um, a possibility of, of stable super loop recity uh, in, in, in sliding. And more details of such uh, super loop recity uh, can be found in the poster session uh, already, as already shown on Monday by our collaborators Andrea Silva. Uh, now come back to the uh, topic of rotational uh, friction. Uh, the way that we uh, realize the rotational motion is to apply a constant torque. The torque is achieved by a very fast rotating magnetic field uh, in a sample plane uh, with uh, the help of two pairs of magnetic coils, uh, which generates a magnetic field in the x and the y direction with a phase shift of 90 degrees. Uh, when this uh, magnetic field is applied to the colored crystals rotating on a surface without uh, uh, corrugation, the clusters will rotate very smoothly uh, with, uh, with a constant velocity as shown in this plot here. When the magnetic field is turned off, the cluster velocity, is, the rotational velocity is zero, and when it's turned on, it remains a constant value, and when it's turned off again, it's, uh, it goes immediately to zero. The mechanism of the of the torque is because of a phase of a phase lag between the magnetization and the rotating magnetic field. Uh, the magnetic ma the magnetization tries to catch up with the rotating magnetic field, but will never be able to do so. So the there's so there's a phase lag, and there's the cross product leads to a torque, uh, which is proportional to the square of the magnetic field, uh, because the magnetization itself is proportional to the Mm, magnetic field. Uh, taking a closer look at this movie here, uh, the cluster is rotating by a torque of about 3.96 piconewton micrometers. Uh, we, from the movie, we see that when the cluster is rotating, is not aligned with the substrate lattice, uh, the rotation is relatively smooth. Uh, while it's aligned with the substrate lattice spacing, the the rotation is stopped for a while. Such kind of intermittent rotation is clearly seen from this uh, plot here where we plot the orientation of the cluster as a function of time. Uh, 
when we apply a much larger torque, of course, uh, the rotation becomes much more smoother and uh, continuously ro the cluster is co continuously rotating. We also uh, systematically uh, uh, changed the, uh, the external torque and uh, uh, the result is shown here. The, uh, the slope of these curves uh, gives, rise to, uh, gives the average rotational velocity of the cluster which is plotted as a function of the applied torque. So from the plot here, we clearly see that uh, there is um, a critical torque or a static friction torque uh, below which the cluster is no longer able to rotate on the periodic surface. To understand the intermittent rotational motion, here in this movie, we color coded uh, for, uh, an, uh, here for, a very, uh, for a very large experimental cluster we color-coded uh, all the particles in the cluster uh, by their interaction energy with the periodic surface. Again, the, low, uh, the, the dark region corresponds to the low energy regions and the brighter regions corresponds to high energy regions. Uh, from the movie, we clearly uh, see, that, uh, see an evolution of the uh, Moray pattern during the rotational motion. Here we plotted the average potential energy of the particles in the cluster as a function of its uh, angle theta. Uh, we see that uh, around zero degrees the potential energy is very low. Uh, this corresponds to this configuration here where uh, most of the particles has very low energy and the system, con the cluster contains a single very large moray, a low energy moray spot. When the cluster rotates 1.6 degrees, uh, we see that the Moray, uh, the low energy Moray spot is, is significantly reduced in size. So this means that the potential energy increases. And uh, at, at this point, at 1.6 degrees, uh, it, it's, uh, there are some other uh, low energy Moray spots just arrived at the outer edge of the cluster. You see this. Uh, this uh, shallowly dark regions, and this, this uh, outside the moray spots, they are just about to enter into the cluster through the edge. And this is the region, this is the moment when uh, the potential energy reaches maximum. And when these uh, regions finally enter into the region, the, low, the potential energy becomes smaller again because they have more uh, um, low energy moray spots. So this potential energy, when they are just arrived in, in inside the inner edge of the cluster, the potential energy reaches a minimum uh, at 2.46 degrees. Uh, similarly, when the cluster rotates 4.39 degrees, uh, a second layer of moray spots went inside the cluster, and this leads to a second uh, low energy minimum. So from this picture, we see that uh, the uh, rotational energy profile of this uh, cluster will strongly depends on the cluster's size and uh, its shape and its boundary, its, uh, how the Moray pattern uh, Moray spots enters the edges during the rotational motion. And this will, of course, strongly influence the measured static friction torque. Uh, so here we measure the static friction torque, uh, tau c, as a function of the cluster's size for uh, three different lattice mismatchings. Uh, unfortunately, in experiments, we are not able to control the shape of the cluster. Uh, so that's why the data looks very noisy. But we are uh, nevertheless be able to see some clear trends. Uh, uh, first of all, the, uh, uh, the static friction will uh, increase when the lattice become better matched. Uh, and the second, the static uh, friction seems to increase with cluster size. This is particularly true when the cluster size is small. Uh, for this blue, for the blue data points corresponds to a very good, very well matched situation with mismatch 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the static friction increases up to uh, when the cluster is about 1,000 particles in size. For this red, Data points with a, a worse uh, lattice mismatch, uh, the static friction uh, torque increases up to about uh, 200 particles, and then it seems that it will start to decrease a little bit. Uh, for this, 
uh, light, for this case with lattice spacing equal to 5.3, uh, the static friction increases up to 100 particle and then becomes almost independent of the cluster size. Uh, in experiments, the maximum size we are able to achieve is around uh, one or 2,000 particles. So to, to know the, the trend at larger size, we have to turn to uh, numer numeric simulations. This is done by uh, our collaborators in uh, here uh, by Andrea Silva. Uh, so this is uh, the results, numerical results for a hexagon shape, for hexagon shaped clusters uh, with different sizes. Uh, the results agrees very well with, ex uh, with experimental data at a smaller cluster size regime. At the uh, from the results, we see that at larger cluster sizes, uh, for all cases, the static friction torque becomes um, almost a constant, uh, fluctuating a little bit, but is more or less constant. Uh, so we, did also, we also found similar trends for square-shaped clusters and also for triangular-shaped clusters. We see that the shape of the clusters indeed influence the results a bit and making the data uh, very noisy as observed in experiments where we have random shaped clusters. Interestingly, when we uh, go to circular shaped clusters, we found uh, something different. The small cluster range, uh, regime agrees re relatively well with uh, the previous results, but at a larger cluster size, uh, the static friction torque seems to become decreasing with the cluster size again. Uh, so this is a bit unexpected uh, results, so uh, we decided to construct a theory to understand, uh, to, 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 to confirm whether this is true or not, and to understand this. Uh, to construct a theory, we want to calculate the uh, potential energy at the contact. Uh, this can, um, be done by sum over the potential energy of all particles in the cluster, uh, um, but uh, with, with uh, pure uh, numerical computing power. But this is not what we want to do. Uh, instead, we want instead of sum over all the particles from the previous animation, we know that the potential energy is actually uh, is uh, is uh, all about the more low energy more response. So we can, instead of sum over all particles, we can sum over the potential energy of every more response that falls in the cluster. So basically, is, these are these more response. Uh, to do so, so we assume that each more response has a Gaussian energy density profile, as shown by this uh, equation here. The, the, width, the width of the Gaussian profile is proportional to the lattice spacing of the more spots which is determined by geometrical relations with the cluster's orientation. And then the energy of the more response can be easily calculated by, by an integral of the Gaussian function. And then um, by some proper uh, um, dealing with the boundary conditions of the cluster's edge, then we can sum over uh, all the more patterns inside the cluster and arrive at such a uh, a formula for the contact for the contact energy as a function of the uh, cluster's uh, uh, orientation theta and its center of mass position. Um, this is quite uh, useful because with this equation we are now able to uh, calculate the static friction torque uh, in, uh, analytically. Uh, this plot here shows the uh, uh, results of the previous analytical uh, formulation. And indeed, it confirms the uh, numerically calculated results for the circular shaped uh, clusters, which shows a clear uh, trend uh, where the st static friction torque uh, decreases with the cluster size with a component with a power law, uh, with a power law like this. Uh, interest, uh, uh, because we have now an analytical formulation for this uh, tau c, so we can, in principle, also try to uh, 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 overlap all these uh, all these uh, curves into a single master equation. So this is uh, how we do it. And uh, okay, so we see that a large cluster uh, uh, in better matched configuration configuration is actually equivalent to a small cluster in not very well matched contact. Uh, 
So now with this uh, formula of the contact energy, we are now finally able to study the rotation translation uh, coupling. Uh, what we do is we construct the Hessen matrix and uh, we calculate the determinant of the Hessen matrix as a function of the orientation theta and the, the translation x. And uh, this is the results. So uh, uh, this green region is uh, uh, where the determinant is greater than zero, and this pink region is where the determinant is uh, uh, smaller than zero and is unstable. And uh, in between, there is a boundary which uh, cover, which is uh, the boundary between the stable and unstable region. Uh, from this uh, determinant matrix, we can construct uh, the depending boundary via, via this uh, first derivatives of this uh, generalized entropy. En enthalpy. Uh, so the results shows that at a small torque and the force, uh, the system is pinged and cannot be moved. Uh, when the torque and the force exceeds a certain boundary, the system will start to move. Uh, the theoretical curve, this orange curve, agree well with the experimental data and the simulation results. And uh, this dashed line here corresponds to uh, the rotation translation coupling of a macroscopic uh, object. Uh, we see that there, there is n the difference is not so large, but actually the uh, mechanisms are fundamentally different. Uh, in the microscopic case, uh, when the cluster is pinned, uh, all the particles, there is a large more pattern centered in the, uh, in the cluster. And when applying, when you try to depend the cluster, the, this large more spots in the center will, will, will have to move out of the cluster from the cluster's edge. Uh, when a torque is applied, such this more low energy more response becomes significantly reduced in size. Therefore, the reduced uh, size, uh, when the size of the spot becomes reduced, it will be much easier to pull it out of the cluster's edge, and therefore the the, f the static force is uh, reduced. So this is the also the, the translation rotation coupling for the case where uh, the two surfaces are not, uh, uh, have different lattice spacings and the results between the microscopic model and the macroscopic model become, becomes larger. So in the end, I would like to thank all my collaborators and uh, those uh, in Constance and in Italy who uh, helped the project, and uh, uh, thanks all for your attention. Thank you very much for sharing these beautiful results and the meaningful analysis. We have almost used up our time, but there's time for one or two questions. And Renato. Hi, very nice results indeed. Uh, I was uh, um, asking whether in the, in the case of a random island, so in the random cluster, when you rotate, you also allow for a lateral translation because in that case, the moiré is not symmetric with respect to the shape of the island. And so the energetics might, might change in that case. Well, random shape of the clusters when uh, sliding, rotating. So the, yeah, you showed the energetics as a function of the rotation. So I was asking if, in that case, you let the translation during, or you force the center of mass of the island fixed during this rotation. No, it's not fixed. It's, uh, it, can, it will be able to move uh, according to the energetics. Okay, it's free. It's free, yes. Okay. One more question. Let me ask myself, um, you, you have very precise information about the shape of your random cluster, so is it not easy to f define some uh, quantitative measure for the ruggedness of the, of the edge and, and just see how that... Hmm? Yes, we have defined something to quantify the shape if, uh, of the cluster. That will be related to quantifying the applied torque. Uh, Okay, but is your scatter explained by the roughness? The roughness? No, the ruggedness, like how, how, uh, how, low, how many low coordinated edges you have along this, the edge of your island that could maybe explain the scatter in your, in your data. Uh, that is related, yes. Mm -hmm. the, the relation would not be quite trivial because the Moray pattern is, uh, uh, for a random shape, the cluster at the edge is a bit complicated. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you very much again. Oh, thank you.
I, I would like to draw everyone.